Hello guys, welcome to Manual Samuel. Take down a bit. I'm going to speak to you while I have one sense up because it's going to be set up and do some of the things that are going to be able to do the Yes. It's cold now. Just two guys. Okay, I'm going to do two guys. Like all these other things are options. I can't wait to. I can't like a cast do my main story for that, so I'm going to look at options, there's sorts of options out. Uh, yeah, I haven't started again before, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't put this up before, so I don't know how it is. Play a bit, if I'm a little. Our story begins in the middle of the 40s, when a hopeful young soldier called Sam... Oh, uh, we're not doing that? Our story begins in the middle of last Tuesday, where a hopeless young freeloader called... Sorry. <laughs> Tap the... Yeah. Sam is sipping a fancy cup of coffee with a name nobody can pronounce. Sam was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But not the actual spoon that he has in his mouth now. That is a different spoon. But a figurative spoon that represents all the wealth and attention that he has been receiving from his parents. And their butlers. And their butlers' parents. You're a douche, aren't you, Sam? Blink twice if yes. <laughs> he can't hear. This is Sam's girlfriend, also not being heard by Sam. She's mad at Sam for his lack of responsibility, produced by his large wealth. She also mentions the fact that Sam has forgotten her birthday for the third year in a row. Sam's girlfriend is upset. As with most rich and famous brats, Sam does not pick up on that. Instead, he decides to lay this gem. Things just work out for me, baby. I can't just run around and do stuff. I'd end up with a limp spine or... Then, Sam's girlfriend does something she should have done a long time ago. Ooh. Sam is laying unconscious on the floor. He gathers his strength and makes an effort to get up. Then he makes another effort to stand up straight. Uh. Sam is hit in the head so hard, he has to remind himself how to walk. He takes a right step. Then he takes a left step. Oh, good good job, good. Sam. You're very good at existing. Child. An overprotective mother hurls a cup of coffee in Sam's uh. face. He has to blink rapidly to regain his vision. Say something, Harold. Oh, gee. How is our son going to become a respected politician if he can't fend for himself? I thought he was going to become an actor. Oh, what's the difference? Sam remembers the one thing he's good at, paying for stuff. So he turns around to pay for his beverage. Sam pays the guy 500 euros, barely covering the coffee. Thanks for the tip, douchebag. Sam decides to hurl another 500 at the guy. Not such a douchebag after all. Sam is hurling stacks of 500s left and right. He has no perception of money. You guys want enough Sam money. is about to spend his whole weekly allowance on tipping a barista named Tony. Tony? He really was hit hard in the head. Holy feces. I'll just start my own coffee shop. Once again, Sam makes someone quit their job by tipping them too much. Suckers. 
Sam spends a decade making his way out the door, which is pretty good as Sam waggles outside. He sees his girlfriend on the other side of the road. Sam pulls himself together and rushes towards his soon-to-be ex-girlfriend. This is when a septic tank truck approaches Sam with an average speed of 90 kilometers per hour. The impact renders him eight times of dinner. That's how you make you out of one thing to this game. That's why I like this game, because I think you make you out of Who knew a bottle to the face would result in such a terrible fate for Sam? But a bottle won't be the only thing that will meet Sam's face today. There's also the ground in hell. not like being dead a single bit. He also hates the eerie feeling of not having any cash on him. Then, he finds seven glowing notes in his pocket. That makes him feel reasonably better. The source of the sound is none other than obliteration and oblivion, extermination and extinction, the end, decease and demise, the grim reaper, death. He's trying to do a kickflip on a skateboard and is dressed like a douchebag for some reason. In his coarse, horrifying voice, he lays this on Sam. Yo, yo, yo! You must be Sam from the info I was provided. Then he takes a second look at Sam and his eye sockets widen. Holy feces, dude! Your soul be like a diamond! Let me cut you a deal that we can seal. The notes in Sam's pocket are something called a shred of life. Every soul has at least one, and it is the biggest unit in Hell's currency, followed by quality of life, school of life, sound of life, meaning of life, and thug life. If you give me your shreds, I'll resurrect your face and get you out of Hell on one condition. You'll have to survive 24 hours with a handicap I choose under my supervision, bro. Sam decides to check out the rest of hell before doing any deals with supernatural beings. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a plumber. That'll be all your tricks, dear sir. All right, that sounds fair. Yes. Sam notices that the souls that get into hell are forced to get a job and become functioning souls of society. For most people, this is okay, but for Sam, it's horrifying. He hurls his shreds at death like he's never hurled piles of money before. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. He keeps the last shred for the next time he meets the gatekeeper of hell. 
and whenever that's going to be. <laughs> Hi, bro. I only get to do these deals annually. But if you really want to live in biz, you have to do it manually. Also, I will stop speaking in rhymes now. That's the only manually, that's what's called manual. Samuel. <laughs> that's why it's called that, because I need to end it, I mean. Manually. Sam has just travelled through time, space, and logic, and finds himself fully alive. And more importantly, rich again. His joy is only dimmed by the fact that he can't move at all. This is when he shows up. Death. Yo, yo, yo! Oh, yeah, you look horrible. I mean, <laughs> you look great, bro. Uh, you be okay? Can you hear me? Um, blink twice if yes. Oh, cool. You be alive. Everything be fine. Alright, so, this here be the dealing biz. All your body functions be manual, so you kind of have to do stuff on purpose. Um, you'll be turning kind of blue. You might want to consider breathing. Sam has to make an effort to get up. This time, he has to focus on his spine. And, once again, he has to remind himself how to walk. Oh, by the way, dude, you be getting late for work. Sam does something that resembles walking toward the bathroom. Gonna do a kickflip now. Sam tries out a strange maneuver by stepping with the same leg twice. Yeah. Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. Sam holds on to that toothbrush like his life depends on it. Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. With clean teeth, Sam is ready to smile. He won't for at least 24 hours, though. Sam is dumb enough to breathe in with his mouth full of water. He has to cough. He has to use his opposite leg to get up again. has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. Come on. Sam tries to take a leap. How hard is it to blink, Sam? Hey, dude, have you seen my... Oh. Uh... Sam takes a leap everywhere. Including, but not limited to, himself. Sam takes a leak on the floor. One empty bladder later, Sam moves on. You're impressing no one, Sam. 
You're spying, Sam. It matters. Sam tries to take a shower. He looks like a mantis that's trying to explain to someone how a bicycle works. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. It's going to be a long day. to find some clues. Breaking skateboard. Hi, let's see. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen again. Oxygen. Again. <laughs> Sam enters his wardrobe. What will he wear today? He picks a pair of blue jeans. And the ugly one. Sam successfully puts on his pants, feeling more accomplished than ever. He proceeds to find a jacket. Only the best one will do. He settles for a mediocre one. Hum. Shoes, living the dream of having shoes on.
Sam walks down the stairs with great precision. Sam decides to hurl himself down the oh. stairs. Apparently too used to hurling money around. is Sam's favorite game. He has no time for playing with a flappy rooster right now, though. Following the story this time, and gang wars are still an escalating problem at Bridge Street, where the police are struggling to regain control. Commuters are advised to... Hey, Lucy, I'm home. Oh, hey, dude. Still alive, huh? There is a note saying, sent over a maid to make you breakfast. Don't breathe in while chewing. Love, Mom. out from the lack of oxygen again. Sam decides to try his luck on some coffee drinking. Sam's coffee is so hot, he blows on it before taking a sip. Sam drops the coffee. Dramatically. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. Again. of cups, out of hope. With some coffee in his system, Sam finds it easier to exist. He finally makes it out the front door, beaten, terrified, stupid. Samuel. So thank you for watching guys. If you like this video please leave a like and if you're new to the channel please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.